It's a burning fire in my soul. We can all use more love to save the world. And if you feel that joy in your heart, hold on, don't let it part. This is Nature Ellis, and you're tuned into Big Stone Television with the vision. A very pleasant good morning ladies and gentlemen welcome once again to big stone television the journey continues we appreciating and respecting and remembering the great of yesteryear the great that brought reggae music to the forefront where it's at today today ladies and gentlemen we must never forget the great ones that paved the way for us for us so we can enjoy the best of what they did and the blood sweat and tears that they sacrificed to get it let's talk about slim smith who was slim smith slim smith will forever remain the genuine jamaican music aficionados favorite singer two of his original composition i'll never let go aka the answer and my conversation are among the most virgin ever in the history of reggae Born in Kingston in 1948, Keith Smith grew up in the West Street area and first sang as a member of the Victor's Youth Band who came to prominence as champions of the Ska and Mentor Contest at the Western Kingston and Jamaica Festival in 1964. Alongside Winston Riley, Frederick Waite and Franklin White, he then became one of the original members of the Techniques who recorded a number of hits included You Don't Know, I'm In Love, and Little Did You Know for Duke Reed's Treasure Eye label and A Place Called Love and I'm So In Love for Rani Nasrallah's Gala label. Before the Whalers hit the most popular group was the techniques with Slim Smith, said Clement Cox and Dad. And in 1966, as the pace of Ska slowed down to rock steady, Keith began recording as a solo artist with Clement Coxon Dodd, who renamed him Slim. Coxon named him Slim, though he was a slim person, said Bunny Striker Lee. Slim Smith and Coxons it again and again with I'll Never Let Go, back with Rougher Yet, Hip Hog and The New Boss, and the excellent Who Is Back Again, with Delroy Wilson and many of his Studio One classics are included on the essential Born to Love long player. He also recorded for Prince Buster on the Stymin the Prophet before forming the Uniques under the guidance of Bunny Striker Lee who was just starting out on his career as Jamaica's most prolific record producer. Slim Smith was part of a group with Winston Riley named the Techniques and I said I'm going to form my own group named the Uniques and Keithy also used to sing with the Sensations. The first Uniques was Derek Morgan, Ken Booth and Slim Smith. They sung the harmonies on People Get Ready to Do Rock Steady. 
That's the first unique tune. People get ready to do rock steady. That was the first tune I recorded with Slim Smith. Ken Booth and Derek Morgan sang the harmony. You have to say they were the first uniques. Through Slim used to sing lead with the techniques. I came up with the name the uniques. Them days you have to think, Bunny Striker Lee said. After three years Slim left the group, the techniques and formed yet another group, the Uniques, and quickly they were Jamaica's number one group with its like Do Rock Steady, Let Me Go Girl, and My Conversation. They say that the top of the chart, said Tony Mack. At the Carrick Theatre, the State Theatre, the Regal Theatre, and the Music Union, they stole the show from any other group performing, and on one memorable occasion, from the Whalers said Jimmy Riley. Lloyd Chalmers came in when we did Let Me Go Girl. The second one that mashed up the place was Let Me Go Girl and B.B. Seaton and Lloyd Chalmers were singing on that one and when the tune came out it was the baddest tune for 1967. It became a monster it ever in Jamaica. Linford, Andy Cap, Anderson mixed and mastered it. You know, girl you hold me trying to control me? Then we did a Dawn Pen piece like it was the answer to it. Boy, me never owe you, Bunny Striker Lee. So the Uniques officially were Slim Smith and Light Charmers, and the original My Conversation was just Slim Smith and Light Charmers. When I formed the Uniques, Light Charmers did bring him in. Jimmy Riley used to work at the Backside Company, and him and Charmers were friends. Winston Grennan played the piano on my conversation. He played the drum on the rhythm track. So Winston Grennan was the drummer with the dingaling piano on the voice track and sometimes he made mistakes. But I make it go the same way. If a man make a mistake, the whole team would have to start over back again, said Bunny Striker Lee. As those days they were just using two tracks. The Uniques will always occupy a very special place in the hearts of Jamaican music lovers. But after they had created some of the most memorable Rockstead records ever made, Slim began to work as a solo singer for Striker, and the pace began to quicken to the more upbeat reggae rhythms. Striker recalled turning up at Studio One on Brentford Road to voice one of Slim's biggest ever hits a version to the Motown classic, Everybody Needs Love, recorded by, among others, The Temptation and Gladys Knight and the Pips, only to be told by Coxon that a sin is done when I done with him, but Stryker and Slim proved him wrong. So I said to Slim, just sing around mixing the board, and Slim blew him away. That was Everybody Needs Love, and that was Slim Smith, biggest it up to date. It was awesome, man. Coxon was around the board and he couldn't move. Slim really did sing him away, Bunny Striker Lee says. Slim's solo career with Striker Lee continued from strength to strength. After a few years, Slim left the Uniques and went solo, and the hits continue. Everybody needs love, blinded by love, and he was off on tour of Canada. He appeared in places like Denmark, France, Germany. Sweden, Wales and all over London. In London he was regarded as the best Jamaican singer and was ill wherever he appears, said Tony Mack. Never want to hold back on his emotion and often blinded by love, Slim wore his heart on his sleeve. In his music and his sometimes fragile mental state led him to a period in Kingston Bellevue Sanitarium and strategy struck in 1973 when Slim met with a fatal accident. Jimmy Riley recalled the sad circumstances of Slim and timely death. I was in New York when I heard about the tragedy and I did not believe it at first. Only when I heard it from several sources did I believe it. Slim had returned home to his parents house after smoking ganja with some friends and could not get into the house. He broke a window to get in and badly cut his arm. His injuries were so severe that he bled to death before he could get treatment, said Jimmy Riley. During his short and tragically curtailed career, Slim Smith first as a technique, a unique and a solo artist, sang numerous 
passionate soulful songs that have become acknowledged Jamaican classics. The posthumous comprehensive collection of his work have ensured his enduring popularity, not only with the longtime devotees of his music, but also with a new, younger audience. Slim is an incomparable singer. Even though he's been dead 30 odd, coming on 40 years, Slim was the nearest thing to Curtis Mayfield, and he could also play instruments. Look how long Slim Smith dead, and you hear his music still. Do you know of another singer who's come up like Slim Smith? You have never had another singer who's made that impact on Jamaican music like Slim Smith, said Bunny Striker Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, gone too soon. Slim Smith, what an artist and what a voice. Working with so many different groups and helped to evolve the music and propel the music to the ice that it is today. We hold the music to these great ones who have died, who have suffered, who have bled to make this music what it is. And that is why we're doing this series and we're very serious about what we're doing. We're making sure that we get the best of the best and expose the best of the best and remind you of the best of the best because Slim Smith certainly was one of the best of the best. Jamaica, let's wake up. Let's get back a grip on reggae music. Remember, reggae music was the people's music, the voice of the people. Jamaica, I join with you today. And to the family of Slim Smith, even though it's been 40 something years, I offer you again my condolences. We have lost an icon. We have lost a legend. Thank you so much for loaning him to us. Thank you, Slim, for giving us some of the greatest music ever that we will cherish for our lifetime. And the generations to come will have it to cherish for their lifetime. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and of course share this video. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, now is the right time to do so. Thank you.